Hey, it's Norm from Tesla.com, and this is so amazing. I'm here in Houston, Texas, at NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Lab, the NBL. I'm here with Chris Hall. He's a Dive Operations Specialist 3, which means you're an instructor here. Yep. Now, Chris, tell me what this facility is, because it looks like a giant swimming pool, but not like any swimming pool I've ever seen. Well, it is a giant swimming pool, but what it is is it allows us to train astronauts to go outside and do EVA, which is essentially spacewalks. So what they can do before they ever go into space is uh, get a chance to put on the suit and go through the tasks that they're going to be asked to do uh, if they are asked to do one. If they're asked to go outside of the spacecraft, they're prepared to do that. They know how to work with the suit. They know the tasks that they're going to be doing. And they've done it 10, 20 different times in the pool before they ever get sent and asked to do it in space. So the astronaut corps, when, you know, whatever the class is, mm -hmm. they, they get suits fitted and the EVA suits and special EVA suits for underwater. And here's where they simulate fixing a space shuttle, fixing the ISS, or working with other modules. It is, it's the same suit. It's a suit that was on station that has been decommissioned. Uh, yes, uh, some things have been made different for the water, like we use umbilicals up in space, they don't have that. Uh, in space, they have a computer on their chest. We have a mock-up that helps us uh, weigh them out, either by putting foam on it or by weight on it, depending on the subject but all the suits are customly made to that astronaut as far as length, as far as glove. They wanna make sure that it's a good fit. You're not getting hot spots, it's not rubbing on you. Uh, astronauts could be in these suits in space, eight to 10 hours, mm -hmm. and our pool they're in for six hours at a time. How does this facility, how does being underwater, what do you do to make it simulate gravity, zero gravity as much as possible? Well, we have the three-dimensional axis. They can go up, they can go down, they can go left, they can go right, they can turn upside down. Uh, so it's the closest thing that we can simulate right now uh, you still have things like the water drag put in place. Mm -hmm. uh, you still have things like pressure uh, as they move up and down in the water column that they've got to deal with. But as far as putting stuff in place uh, and making them neutral in the water, that's part of our job as a safety diver. Make sure if they roll on their back, they stay on their back. They put their legs up, their legs stay in the position that they put them in. Uh, mm -hmm. We want to make sure that whatever axis they go in, they're going to stay pretty much right there. So there's a team of divers here whose job is to basically swim around the astronauts as they're in their suits and to assist them in simulating that experience. Yes. Uh, for every astronaut in the water, we have two safety divers. We have a float diver, which essentially is a camera diver, videotaping the entire run that the astronauts mm -hmm. are in. And then we're going to have two utility divers, which are there to help with tools, uh, to help with the tasks, to help with setup. We're constantly monitoring them, we're checking on them if they need to move throughout the water, and we're there for their safety as well. When the NBO was originally built, you guys made it for the space shuttle, you guys have had mock-ups of space stations, and right now there's mock-ups of ISS modules. So can you talk about a little about what those mock-ups are and how they function? Now the mock-ups that you see in the pool are one-to-one -one config. Different material, obviously it's got to hold up to the water. Uh, we don't need the electrical or any of that. Not, none of the interior. None of the interior, it's all the exterior. As far as every rail, as far as every bolt, as far as where every rail should be in place. If they have to go turn a bolt 98 times, they right. have to do that in the pool because they're going to have to do it in space. And which ISS module is in the pool right now? Pretty much the, everything that we have in the pool except for the Russian segment. We have the S0, we have the 1s, we have the 3s, the 4s, the 5s, we have the pallets that kick off of them, mm -hmm. we have the labs, we have the nodes, we have the Columbus, we have the gems, we have the gem uh, EBS. I heard that there's also Japanese module simulated? Yes. Okay. Uh, in that far corner, we have the Japanese section. It's got the Japanese exposed pallet. The Columbus is the European portion. The lab is kind of the U.S. portion. So it is an international space station, and the Russians have their own section out towards the back. Uh, do, do Russians have their own NBL equivalent? They do. It's a much smaller pool. Uh, it's nowhere near this size, but they do their own training uh, with their own suit. Now, the Russians don't use the same suit that we do. Uh, they use the Orlon, so they train specifically for that over in Star City in Russia. Now, you trained as a professional diver before you worked here at NASA. How is this pool and the diving experience different than you know, commercial diving or recreational diving? Uh, we're in the water a whole lot longer than most people and we put more hours in than just about anybody else in the Several world. Several hours at a time. Uh, you can put up to four hours in in a day when you're, when you're working on the, uh, with the astronauts. Outside of that, you can put in up to five hours a day if you're working on something else, working on mock-ups, doing commercialization diving. Uh, in a year, some of our divers put in up to 600 hours a year underwater. If people are interested in diving or you know, recreational divers themselves, what is the right career path for them to try to be an NBL diver? Uh, well, if you want to be a diver here, uh, you can go to Oceaneering.com. Uh, Oceaneering employs most of the divers here. Uh, make sure that you know what you're getting into, so a lot of water time. Most recreational divers may put in 30, 40 divers in their lifetime. We'll put you 30, 40 divers in the first couple of weeks. <laughs> 
Chris, in addition to training astronauts, you also test potential new designs for spacesuits here also, right? Yes, an organization or company would come in, they would start their process as far as the TRR, so the safety reviews, on a new suit with their new ideas. Uh, we're in the process right now of doing a bunch of new suits. One of the organizations you can see behind us is coming through, and they're testing essentially the old Apollo suits, the flight suits that uh, the astronauts were still using, to see if they could change it up a little bit and make it a suit that could be capable of doing a spacewalk. EVA. So they, EVA. So if they had to go out and, and fix something, or if they had to go out and work on something, would this suit hold up? Now, you're looking at months, to potentially even years, of design work and teamwork and hard work and safety reviews to see if they can get up to, uh, to standard in the car. So what happens to the modules in the pool when you want to repair them or when they get retired? Now about twice a year we have stand down uh, periods. And they literally last about two to three weeks per period. And uh, so if the mock-ups need repair, and the divers are in there and they're constantly monitoring, they're constantly working on them, if they can be done in the water, we do that. But about twice a year or once a year, we'll pull the mock-ups out, we'll go through, we'll replace all the handrails, we'll replace all the plastic, all the product that could essentially break down due to the chlorine that we use in the pool, gets lifted up by our two major DMAG cranes that fly above the facility. Say so these host up about 20 tons. So we'll break the mock-ups apart, we'll lift them off the stands, and we'll move them to our high base. That allows us to go in, do any kind of uh, work, any kind of maintenance on these mock-ups, make sure that, well, in reality, they are what they're supposed to be so the astronauts do get the most effective training. Cool, thank you so much, Chris. This is an amazing facility. We're glad can't you believe, can make it out. Yeah, I can't believe you get to work here every day and swim with astronauts, swim Absolutely. around them, literally. <laughs> That's right. All right, thank you so much. We'll have more from Houston and from uh, Johnson Space Center here in Houston, Texas on Tesla.com. I'll see you next time. Bye.